Hey guys, Ben here and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about The Flash. They've just released a new documentary featuring Grant Gustin. I'm very excited to talk about it today. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future DC TV videos later this year. So let's go ahead and jump right into this. This is very exciting. This kind of came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting any kind of Flash documentary to come out. Obviously, we had the Flash coming out on DVD, and as well, we have the Flash movie coming out as well. So, you know, there is various things, so I guess it's not that crazy that something like this would be released right now. But anyway, it's online, and I've been able to watch it. I'll leave the link in the description below so you guys can go ahead and watch it for yourself. But basically, for the most part, and the documentary is not too long, but not too short as well. It's about, like, just under 40 minutes. It basically talks about the history of the Flash and why the Flash is what he is in the comics and then eventually evolving and adapting into different TV shows, whether it be animated, live action or anything like that. And so they have a bunch of interviews in this documentary. There's like Jeff Johns, other people that have been very influential in the Flash's creation, I guess you could say, in the past. And obviously moving forwards into the future and most recently we've had the Flash TV show with Grant Gustin obviously we're all huge fans of Grant here on the channel so we'll always big him up but also there is the Ezra Miller version of the Flash which just had the Flash film come out and they had also been on like various different projects in the past so we've seen them quite a lot but nevertheless so the first part is very intriguing and if you want to know more about the Flash you should watch it. However, for me, it's a little bit less interesting because I know all of this and it's just kind of people explaining the Flash's history. But the most interesting bit happens at about like the 27-ish minute mark. And at that point, we get the proper introduction of Grant Gustin's TV show Flash from the CW. Also, Grant has various interview clips throughout this documentary. He's also in that segment talking about the Flash as a whole, the character of Barry Allen and what he's like so obviously i'm not going to go into that but you guys should definitely go ahead and watch it because yeah you'll get to hear grant and see grant talk about this and this is the first time that grant has come back and has actually talked about this obviously i believe they filmed this before and i reckon it was like around the time that they were finishing the flash so it's nothing revolutionary but it's still cool to see grant gustin come back talk about the flash just like melissa bonois did with the recent supergirl documentary that hbo max released well now it's called max but they released it it was online and that was really interesting you guys can go ahead and watch that video if you want it's up on my channel right now but for now let's go ahead and go into the arrowverse portion of the documentary Greg Berlanti is one of the first people to talk about Grant's Flash and the way that they wanted to make the Flash, or Barry Allen specifically, in the CW show. Basically, they saw Barry as kind of like the nerd, and he's the one that's always excited to see other heroes, and in the documentary, for example, they show when Grant first sees, or the Flash specifically, first sees uh, Steven's arrow as he leaves after they've met for the first time after Barry got his powers and he's like, cool. And they go on to say that basically there's something so special about Grant Gustin's portrayal of the Flash because you can tell he's having fun whilst he's running and he's having fun making it. He's very relatable and he's goofy, he's normal, but he's not like completely over the top. He can be very serious, he can be focused. And I think that's one of the problems that the Flash movie runs into it's only towards the end of the film do they get more serious. It's just a bit too much, you know, on the comedy side for a while. And I think that just comes with Andy Muschietti not really fully understanding the character as compared to the people that originally created the Flash TV show because they were already steeped in Arrow and, you know, Greg Berlanti had already done that and he had basically had some experience with these comic book characters. And so... Yeah, you know, that's always going to be the thing with a film, you know, it's less amount of time you get to spend with the characters, you have to go and really strike one specific tone, but with a show that goes on for like nine seasons in the end, you can go with so many different tones, and we saw that on The Flash, like you saw The Flash being very serious from like seasons one, two to three, but also goofy at the same time, but also having very serious 
deadly villains facing off against them. Whereas, you know, in season four, it was completely goofy. Like, it was just totally different. And that's what the TV format gives you. And then Grant goes on to talk about the reason why he connected so much with Barry from the TV show. Because he connected very much so to the way that Barry acted. Because it was kind of similar to himself. Grant himself is a little goofy. He's not entirely serious. But also he connected with his sensitivity, his openness, and the way that he interacts around his friends, his family, specifically Iris as well, of course. And, you know, that comes from good writing, that comes from someone with a good vision who has come to Grant and been like, Okay, this is how we want to play this Barry, this is how you are as a person, so adapt it and change it as you like. And that's what Grant did, he made The Flash his own character. And that's why it's hard to believe anyone else as Barry Allen after Grant Gustin. Because he was so good, it's so relatable, and he is quite similar to the character he plays. Then after this, Greg Belanti comes in and he talks about how Barry has a heart of gold and, you know, he's always trying to do the right thing. And so he always had a hero's heart, as Greg Belanti says, so it just made sense that once he got the powers, that's what he did with it. Like, he wanted to help people and use his powers in a good way instead of becoming a criminal like so many of these metas that were affected during the same night that he was affected. And so, yeah, that's what Greg Belanti talks about. And I think it's really good what he's commenting upon because that's exactly what we see as fans watching the show. Barry definitely has a heart of gold and, you know, he's just so likable, he's so lovable. But also, you just love to watch him. Like, you love to watch him running. You love to watch him facing off against bad guys because that's what he does. It's like, that's his DNA. Then after this, Jeff Johns comes in. He talks about Greg Belanti and the way that he wanted to create the show. And he wanted, basically, to take the essence of Barry from the comics, specifically the Flash rebirth. And so they took the emotional core of what they did in Flash rebirth with Jeff Johns when he originally wrote that just before The Flash actually aired, so it was very much so linked to that comic. He actually says, back then, they were like, we're gonna make it the most comic book DC show that's ever been made. Then it shows the example of them doing Flashpoint, them going back in time, them introducing the multiverse, you know, doing such complicated things, and then eventually leading towards the crossovers, which definitely made the Arrowverse one of the biggest things in comic book history, I would argue as big as like the Avengers, despite the Avengers making loads of money and everything like that, obviously it's a different medium, TV, you never get, you know, the outlay of, oh, how much money did it make? You only get how many viewers watch the episode and that's about it. So it's really all down to the fans to prove and say, okay, we love this so much and that's what we did with the Arrowverse. But it's great that they pay homage to how comic booky the show actually went. Like, it fully went into time travel, doppelgangers, and everything like that. And I just loved it so much. And I'm sure you guys agree with me. And then Grant goes on to talk about how early on in season one, Barry was very young. He was very goofy. He was very sensitive. He led with his heart. And he says that he thought that was the way that their version of The Flash separated themselves from other heroes out there because he wasn't serious like Arrow or he wasn't serious like Batman. He was in fact, you know, just a normal person, a little bit goofy, a little bit nerdy, but he had these amazing powers. But then Grant goes on to talk about how he could have done it all alone, but he didn't want to do it all alone because, you know, he realized he needed help. But then they go on to talk about how the Flash show actually pioneered the Arrowverse and basically created the crossovers and made it a big thing along with Arrow. Just like in the comics when they introduced the multiverse, it was very Flash-centric and it's always been Flash-centric when it comes to time travel, when it comes to multiverse and everything like that. And Jeff John says, without the success of The Flash, you wouldn't see Supergirl, you wouldn't see all the other shows that came after, like Legends, like Batwoman, like Gotham Knights, like anything along the lines of Superman and Lois. You definitely wouldn't have seen it without the success of The Flash and also Arrow. Then, just as they're closing out on the Grant section, on the Flash TV show section, they talk about how Grant made his version of The Flash so lovable, so relatable, and a fan favorite for generations to come. Like, no one else is going to be as popular as him playing The Flash for a long time to come. Like, Ezra has nothing on Grant. And that's actually been a big 
kind of topic of discussion online for a long time, especially as the Flash film was coming out. Everyone was comparing Grant's Flash to Ezra's Flash, but really there's no comparison. Number one, the different mediums, but also number two, Grant's Flash is the best. He has the most heart, he's the most relatable, and obviously the troubles with Ezra just make it even more obvious how great of an actor Grant is and how he brought his Barry to life in such a great way. And so after this, then the documentary shifts towards Ezra's Flash. You can go ahead and watch the rest of that in the link in the description below. So the title of the documentary is The Flash 2023, The Saga of the Scarlet Speedster. It's a mini documentary. It's like just under 40 minutes long. As I said, obviously we were breaking down the Arava side of things and the Grant Gustin side of things. And so, yeah, that's kind of what they discussed. Obviously, there's bits and pieces that I didn't exactly talk about, but... I went over most of the stuff and yeah, just overall to end my thoughts on this, I love that they got Grant back and they got him to talk about this. I love that Greg Belanti's involved, Jeff Johns is involved and everyone like that because I think these voices really matter when it comes to The Flash and I'd like to hear that, you know, he is the best Flash basically. That's kind of what they're all hinting towards and, you know, how he is the fan favorite, like, He's going to stay like that for a long time. So that pretty much does it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And for now, click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.